Hi everybody, I'm Mike, this is Budget Guns and Gear Reviews. And in October 2018, I went to the Pathfinder School in Southern Ohio to take their basic survival course. For those that don't know, this is a school owned by David Canterbury of both YouTube and television fame, and they're considered one of the uh, premier survival schools in the country. Let's take a look at what my experience was, and then afterwards we'll go over what uh, I took from it. Stick around, maybe we'll learn something together. We started off our day with a uh, meetup at the Exxon Station in Wellston, Ohio. Uh, once we were satisfied that, uh, well, once Dave was satisfied that everyone was there, we uh, kind of caravaned following Dave back to his house where we loaded up all of our gear onto this trailer and, uh, man, there was a lot of it. Then we walked the good uh, five, six hundred yards down to the campsite area where the classroom was, which you see uh, some shots of it here. These are some projects that uh, Dave and his cadre of instructors have made in the past to uh, demonstrate in either YouTube videos or to class classes. Uh, we started with a uh, series of lectures by Dave and his instructors on various topics like uh, the five C's, uh, five more C's, um, and, and other philosophy type stuff with to do with uh, the class, as well as safety lectures and briefings and uh, you know on such topics as knife use, uh, proper batoning technique, etc. Uh, we also did some uh, first aid stuff uh, as far as what to do with the uh, brakes, strains, sprains, bleeding, uh, which you see here is a really interesting way that uh, Josh Enyart, I apologize if I butchered that name, but anyway, he uh, taught us a means to suture without actually going through the skin, and uh, I'm going to go over this in a separate video in and of itself. I think it's that important. But anyway, we had a lot of briefings that uh, we went through and some classroom lecture on some stuff. Um, but then, you know, we all started to uh, get ready to go on the uh, main activities of the day. And by main activities of the day, I mean walking. A lot of walking. Uh, the majority of the class takes place in the wildlife area behind Dave's property. And uh, we walked to get there. Uh, did I mention we walked? Yeah, because we walked a lot. It wasn't walking for walking's sake though, because our walk was broken up by lectures on various topics depending upon where we are and what the resources were. Uh, you know, we talked about things like identifying white pine and its uses, we talked about fire lays, we talked about uh, uh, different knots and lashings. Uh, we had some projects where we had the, well for instance as you see here, we had to build a stretcher. Uh, they use the EDI method of instruction, educate, demonstrate, imitate. So they would tell us about what we were doing, they would show us what we were going to do, and then they would have us do it. Uh, I think that's a pretty good way to teach on, a very, on various topics. Uh, in this exercise, for instance, uh, one of us was a designated casualty and uh, had limited use of uh, one arm, and we had to... Uh, build a stretcher with our partner to carry all of our stuff on. Uh, there you see me in my balding glory uh, <laughs> trying to lash these this frame together with one hand. Uh, it was interesting to say the least. Oh, you see these bags in the background? We learned to hate these dang bags. Uh, part of the uh, equipment you need to take is these 55 gallon drum liners and you have to fill these with sticks because you're going to need them when you get back to camp to create fires with and boy oh boy they are a complete pain to carry 
but uh, we did it and uh, yeah we needed it too because we built a lot of fires this is the remnants of the first fire I had I uh, was uh, trying to dry out some of my uh, inner bark tinder bundle with uh, the embers of the, of the fire because it was all wet and but anyhow I, I was successful with that made uh, several fires there at the end of this night uh, you know by the time we were done it was full dark as you can see and we were still making fires overall I think this class is really great I would highly recommend anyone to uh, to go but there are some things that uh, you need to consider first. Keep in mind when I tell you this that I had to leave at the end of the first day. I called home and found that there was a family emergency that I had to tend to. Everyone's okay by the way, um, but I had to leave. Uh, so I wasn't there for the second day of shelter building, land navigation, and all the rest of it. Plus the uh, overnight that you had to spend in a shelter that you built by yourself so I wasn't there for that I will be going back to the class at some point where I will finish the doggone thing but as I said there are some things that you need to uh, consider before you want to go to this class the first thing is that there's a lot of walking involved if I hadn't mentioned that before uh, and you're carrying all of your gear uh, Dave has a list of gear that is required for the completion of this class and it's on the self reliance outfitters website and uh, you carry it all with you all the time everywhere and you had better be in shape to do it to be fair they do tell you that from the get-go on the website in the class description that you need to be walking around carrying your gear for at least a month ahead of time to get ready for this because it's intense and it, it's an intense physical experience for sure um, so make sure you're in a uh, good state of health whenever you want to go try and take this class the next thing you need to consider is that this is going to be your view for some time during this class you're going to be collecting these sticks and uh, stuffing them in this bag and then you will become intimately familiar with carrying this 55 gallon drum liner full of sticks everywhere you go uh, but the thing is you need it you need it for the fire building exercises and it does make sense to have you collect this stuff as you go instead of trying to take the time to do it when you're doing the uh, the fire exercise that and well the area around the camp would be depleted pretty quickly if uh, everybody did it right there so hey I completely understand why they have you do this but managing this drum liner is a complete pain in the rear um, if anybody has a good idea as to how to to carry this thing believe me I would love to hear it so that uh, I could use that trick than for when I return to this course. Another thing you need to take into consideration is food. Uh, you're going to be so busy during the first day, you're not going to have time to stop and prepare a meal. You're go, 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 go. So my advice, take something with you that you can eat on the fly that you don't have to cook. Uh, because otherwise, you're going to be hungry. As I said, I had to leave at the end of day one, so I can't tell you anything about day two. But that being said, there are some things that I learned, even though I didn't complete the class. Uh, the first one is that you have to be in, in pretty decent physical shape to do this class. It was very rough for me to complete the, uh, the first day, but I did do it. Uh, Dave tells us that uh, as long as you're trying, the, he and his instructors won't give up on you. And I get that. They uh, stayed with me and, and gave encouragement and uh, really helped me get through it. You know, even though I had to perform the task myself and, you know, hump my own gear and drag that uh, litter by myself, you know, I did it. And they were, they were there to, uh, 
help help motivate me and make sure that I did do it. Uh, there was one point where Dave offered to carry my big bag of sticks, but I wouldn't let him do it, saying that uh, you know if I were if I'm if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this by myself. And I think that's kind of the right attitude that you have to have in order to complete this course. Um, number two, uh, gear. Uh, it's it's real important to uh, pick the right stuff and not have too much of it. Have just what you need and nothing else. Um, that. Uh, that's definitely something that I'm going to have to revise. Uh, I will uh, do a future video where I show the required equipment to take on this class, go over everything that I chose, and then I'm going to do another video on how that's going to affect my personal gear loadout that I take when I'm not at this class, you know, that I take for out in the woods with me by myself. Uh, it, it, it's made me rethink some things. Um, Another thing that I needed to rethink is uh, the way I was carrying my gear. I was using a uh, sort of a web gear suspension system. You know, I had a uh, battle belt on with a uh, H harness to suspend it from my shoulders. And all my gear was very well distributed, the weight was. However, those uh, external molly pouches really got in the way. And I'm gonna figure out some other way to uh, carry stuff that still distributes the weight. Um, would I do this again? Oh yeah, absolutely. It uh, is not on the cheap side. You know, as of right now, it's 450 bucks for the course. Um, but I'm starting to save my pennies already so I can take it again next year. Uh, I will finish this thing. Um, so, you know, despite knowing the hardship of it, how difficult it is, you earn that patch. You know, anyone that has uh, completed the course and earned their patch has earned it. You know, it's not something that's just given to you. So, uh, you know, Dave and his inst instructors are uh, professional, knowledgeable, uh, really good bunch of people. I'm uh, proud to have even completed day one of this thing, and I uh, feel, uh, feel that uh, in the future, I'm absolutely gonna go back and take another crack at it. So I'm Mike, this is Budget Guns and Gear Reviews. That was my overview of the uh, Pathfinder Basic Survival course. If uh, you like what you saw, please like, share, subscribe. Consider becoming a patron on my Patreon account. And as always, come on back. Maybe we'll learn something together.